Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so glad to be with you here again this morning. These seasons are like no other. Allow me to ask you to stand up, everybody on your feet. I want you to hold somebody's hand on your left and on your right. Just everybody from the front to the back, except those who have children, of course, or have a reason why you can't stand up. Everybody stand up. Just hold your hands. I would like just to pray before we enter into this arena of God revelation. Let's just bow our heads and uh, let we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this morning we come and we stand on this altar of fire where your name is honored and where you are celebrated. Thank you for the men and the women you have brought this morning into the sanctuary where you dwell. Thank you, Father. You know who they are, where they're at. You understand because you are the architect of their destiny. Oh, allow me to come with the word of strength to empower them to rise above all and to stand on a new stage, a new platform as they continue to run this great and honorable race. Father, I silence every strange voice in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of destruction to leave this place in Jesus' mighty name. I take authority against the counsel of darkness, against the counsel of the enemy. Let it frustrate right now in Jesus' mighty name. I reverse his counsel and I establish and superimpose the will of God. This morning, let this church arise with a greater hope. This morning, let your Holy Spirit come and bring a, a true visitation. And you enlarge our capacity and increase our spiritual horizon. I celebrate you for their lives, men and women, for their families. I celebrate you, Father, for their heart that is willing. And I give you thanks for who they are in you and who you are in them. Let your will be done in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. And somebody say amen. Let's just put our hand together and give a clap offering to the Lord this morning because he has been good to us. And tell your neighbor, welcome to the place of empowerment. Oh yes, welcome to the place where we can exchange our burdens, our sadness with joy. Welcome to the place of peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You may have a seat. You can tell I am so excited and I'm so thrilled in my spirit. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have given us life and opportunity to be a spokesman in this generation, and for the many of you standing here, servants of God, who have said yes to the call and not returning back. Yes, your hands are on the floor. Let's keep pushing forward because Jesus Christ is happy in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to celebrate your senior pastor, Pastor Nadia. Let's put our hand together for this great woman of God. And uh, I bless her in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. And God bless you for the amazing work you are doing. God is using you to set up a platform upon which growth for the next 10 years will take place, and I'm very excited for it. You are a very gifted and anointed woman. Praise God, somebody. I'd like to continue uh, this morning on what we started, speaking about understanding spiritual intelligence. Understanding spiritual intelligence. We talk about IQ. We talk about emotional intelligence, but allowed me to introduce to you a higher dimension than those ones, that is spiritual understanding. What make one man or one woman being used by God, raised up in the generation to become the face of God? What is the old path that they embrace? What did they acquire? What are the demands? By which level of wisdom are they operating? In these last months, as I retreat in, recovering, regaining strength, I begin to see things that I've never seen before. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. These messages are to challenge you 
and to bring you light that is understanding. Galatians 2.2, 2. he went up by understanding, not just by desire. This course that we are following, this race we are running, this prophetic journey we have undertaken, it is not sentimental. It is not emotional. It is walked and run by truth, stamina of faith. That's what happened to the man who rose above the peers and command in the generation. And that's what we want to be for our generation. That's what we need to be for our families. That's what we need to be in our school places, on the marketplace. We do not want to trail from behind. The Bible says we are the head and we are not the tail. It has to become an experience, not just a theological truth. Hallelujah, somebody. You know, success is not predicated just because uh, we believe in the final finished work of Christ or we love God or love God love us. No, 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 no. That gives us access to the kingdom. Now, the kingdom has mysteries or keys. We need to acquire now those keys so we can command. Hallelujah. There's a key to access the kitchen. There's a key to access the bedroom. There's a key to go to the bathroom. Are you hearing me, somebody? We are coming to seek God and to ask an audience with the God of all wisdom so he can release unto us secrets that he has hidden from the wise of this world, from the archive of heaven. Hallelujah. I spoke to you last time. It is no longer the lack of truth or ignorance, but rather it is to stop using truth randomly. It will bring frustration in our lives and wonder why things don't work. God don't want, doesn't want just to give us knowledge because knowledge without understanding is another form of ignorance. We need to tap higher to understand by the light of God or to use truth sequentially to secure a desired result. That's what I'm trying to bring you in. That's what I'm trying to bring you in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I spoke a lot last Sunday. Those who are not here, please go in the internet, follow these messages. I'm just going to go into it right away. What make a man the face of God in his generation? I told you it's not the prayer, and it's not just fasting, and it's not just a seed. Those things are great. But if you don't understand on which platform do they need to operate, you will still be frustrating praying till morning. And so I gave you the first clue. It didn't look very exciting, but that's just the way it is. It's death. A man and a woman need to die. Die to their own self-ambition. Die to their own will. That's the beginning of all things. Only then prayer become effective. Only then fasting become effective. Only then your seed become effective. John 12, 24 says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and die, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. In other words, I told you, death is the pathway for you to acquire the ancient path, the systems of God, the wisdom, the understanding that we need to be able to rise up to another level. Many are still standing, refusing to fall. They are all well collected. They will not heed to the voice of a man. They are prideful, self-confident in their own, convinced that they have everything they, have, they need. They have no room for God or to the voice of God. No Delegated authority can have one word that they can be instructed with and take it because they are all well collected. I told you it is a dangerous thing to fail for too long, but it's also a dangerous thing to succeed just because you know only one truth. Thank you, Jesus. And there are those who have fallen but still are not dead. 
In other words, they have taken the way to surrender. They have taken the way of, uh, uh, you know, humbling themselves. But yet, down deep within, they still have self-motivations, self-ambition. They're refusing somehow to let it go. But the Bible says we have to fall on the ground and die. Die from our own ambition, our own self-motivated desires that are not aligned with God's will. This message may sound so harsh, but my staff and my rod shall comfort you. I am being comforted by this message. Hallelujah. Many have hit the ground. They have gone the way of death and have not crossed the line of death. Jesus said there is a cup he has to drink so that it can be raised up and given a name above every other name. Jesus said that cup, you cannot escape it if you want to sit in the place of glory and become the face of God and have success and an impact. It is a cup of death. When man let go their will and embrace the will of God, himself cry out in the garden of Gethsemane, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. It is a cup, it's like a portion that will undress you and dress you with humility and meekness. I come to challenge you to let it go. There is a place where God wants to take you. And as long as we refuse to die and face certain realities of the rottenness of our heart and attitude and behavior and a certain limitation and character traits, we will remain at this level being successful, but yet so below where God really wanted to take us to. This message is not only for you. This message is for me. I want to reach up to the next level of my calling. Therefore, there must be a price to pay, a cup to drink, another level of humility, another level of brokenness, that we can say, Lord, anything I cannot give you, may it never come to me in the first place. Everything I cannot let go, may it never come to me in the first place. Don't give me Isaac if I'm not able to give back Isaac to you in the first place, crossing the line of death. We do not escalate to higher heights in the kingdom by emotions or by just good heart. We do not escalate to become the face of God and have an impact just because we are sweet and sweetheart and, and nice people. Death is a place that's costly where you need to undress yourself of certain realities of your life, that everybody is clapping hands for you because they think it's so nice, but yet you know down deep within. It has to go. It has to go. When a man cross death, he avoids certain debates and discussion and fights. When a man cross death, certain frustration do not get a hold of them because those things get a hold only of those who are still alive. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Don't let people clap you out of the God's will. I'm saying that not to you, to all of us. Don't let people clap you out of the will of God. Don't let your self-ambition 
push you out of the will of God. Sometimes people can appreciate you at the level where you are, in such a level, in such a depth that you think you are arrived. You are not arrived. There is still much to learn. There is still much to give out and give away. We still need another level of transformation, of being undressed of pride, undressed of self-centeredness, undressed of ego behavior. Hear me. God loves us all. That's the truth. And he will always love us. Hear me. What I'm going to say is strong. But God doesn't trust us all. Love is granted. Trust is a reward. God loves us. But can he trust me? What the next level? Can he trust you? What the next level? Yeah, he loves us. Death is an upgrade. It's an opportunity for you and I to be upgraded so that we can be crowned with the next thing. What you are looking for is looking for you. But it cannot find you because your present state does not correspond with your next level of coronation. Abraham, you can give birth to Ishmael, but until you become Abraham, Abraham, you can give birth to Ishmael, but until you become Abraham, you cannot give birth to Isaac. We need to enter in another level of sacrifice. Those who have cut a covenant with me by sacrifice, I will reveal my secrets. You have no capacity to raise up an Isaac until you become Abraham. Abraham has the loins that can produce Isaac. Abraham do not, doesn't have it. In other words, your next blessing, your next glory moment is looking for you, but you have to be upgraded through death and total surrender so you can meet what is next. So your future does not become a strange to you. Your future doesn't become a stranger to you. Your blessing doesn't become a stranger to you. Your next elevation does not become a stranger to you. There is a walk of transformation. There is a walk of crossing the line. There is a walk of drinking the cup of death, of surrender, of yielding our lives to him. Don't let people clap you out of the will of God. Don't let them celebrate you in staying where you are. Don't let them tell you, you are so amazing. You are so great. You deserve more than that. You are so powerful. You should have been leading a bigger place. You should have been leading a bigger church. You should have been leading a bigger business. You are so phenomenal. Listen to me, brother and sister. Yes, you are phenomenal, but you need transformation for the bigger business. The day you allow your proud, the day you allow your pride to give you a reward of completion, listen to me, the day you allow your pride to graduate you out of the school of waiting on God, learning and humbling yourself, that day you have traded God's operational agenda for your life, for self-made destiny. The day a man and a woman allowed pride, 
celebrating them, graduating them, telling them they have completed the curriculum. That day, you have walked out of God's operation. You have embraced the way of the world. You have become a master of a self-made destiny. Though you are called, and though he loves you, can he trust you? And with what can he trust you at this present state? Death is not an enemy now. I'm not talking about physical death, brothers and sisters. Get spiritual. I'm speaking about the letting go of self-ambition pursuits that are worthless in the confine of eternity. I'm talking about that ego of a man, the pride that refused to listen, to obey, to submit, to surrender. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a man and a woman who cannot say yes to God anymore. It has to be always a debate and a gathering of arm wrestling. Harabo Shandeya. Let the rod and the staff comfort you. As long as we are alive in ourselves, brothers and sisters, something in you at one time or another will interrupt God's program for your life. If you do not die to this sin, one day it will interrupt God's program for your life. If you do not die from that stubbornness and rebellious attitude, one day it will interrupt God's program for your life. I call it the law of surrender. It's powerful. It will purify our motives. It will destroy in us every trace of cunning and manipulation. The law of surrender, the crossing of the line of death, will purify and eradicate the pride and the self-centeredness that lead our life and set limits to our possibilities. Listen to me. This is a season where the kernel that fall on the ground have to die. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They are individual. When they stand, whatever they do, not just only church, business, family, in their communities, in the marketplace, in the ministry, ambassadors of Christ. You watch them. They don't say much. Sometimes not very eloquent. Not even sometimes well spoken. But when you see them, it's though God owed them his presence. It's like when they stand, it's like God has to run to come and display his presence. It's like God owed them his presence. Harabo shande yabayala kadaya. I will say it boldly. Only dead people can carry God. Only yielded people can carry God and display his glory. Brothers and sisters, this is not the time for you to focus on yourself. This is not the time to look in here. It is the time for us to yield to the will of God, humble ourselves before the hand of the Lord, that he will lift us up in due time. It is the time to die from our own self-centered behaviors and ambition and strong will. There are many people who have lost the ability. They lost the ability to say no to God. They are so yielded. 
they lost the ability to say no to God. They are so yielded. Total surrender. They lost the ability to say no to God. Their motto is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Like Job, yes. I don't understand. I look on my left, I do not see you. I look on my right, I don't perceive you. What are you, Lord? But yet still, I will not curse you. I will not turn against you. When you will finish with me, I will come out like gold. You will add to my value and you make me cross this valley of the shadow of death and you make me cross on the other side. Job thunder by the spirit at the end. He said, I have heard of you. Now I see you for my redeemer lives. The redeemer lives because he died and rose again. He died and rose again. No resurrection without dying. There is a better you that's waiting on the other side of the line of death. Listen to me. We are in the information era. You go to Google, you can find everything you want. Every book on any subject you can become an expert sitting in your office. Are you hearing me? You can know how to do so much thing just through Google. And I bless God for information because it's important. You can read the books of anybody you want. But hear me. There is something you cannot get through that. It is the sacrifice they have to go through. You can acquire their knowledge, but you cannot acquire their presence that they command because they paid the price of crossing the line of death. Hallelujah. The way they have surrendered their life, you cannot grab that. That doesn't get transmitted. You have to go through it yourself. Hear me, there are some mountains somebody should not take them down for you. There are some Goliath somebody cannot take them down for you. David said, leave me Goliath. I don't want an army. I don't want help because there are certain giants that are standing before you that you need to take down by yourself so you can have national preeminence. It's got to be you. It is the same with humbling ourselves. No one can humble you. No one can make you yield to God. No one can make you cross that line of death. Death is what gives value to your prayers. That's what gives value to fasting. Death. That's what set you apart. Love and trust. As I said, he loves you regardless. But God doesn't trust us regardless. I hear me somebody. The anointing, the power to do. It comes as a result of death. If the olives is not crushed, there is no oil that will come out of it. The olive produce oil through death. It's refined by fire through death. Hallelujah. When a man and a woman of God cross the line of death and surrender completely to God, there are certain impulses that do not activate them anymore. Are you offended? Do you want to drop out? Out of the race? If somebody say a word to you or against you that won't make you just jump and smack somebody on the head. 
Are you disappointed with God or with man? Who did something at work you didn't like that now for three days you are pondering in your head how you're going to respond back to them and smack them back? Are you filled with rage and vengeance? Certain impulses that a dead man do not react to. I spoke to you last Sunday. You cannot scare a dead cow with a knife. Please. I'm speaking to you and I. There are certain stagnation in the life of a man that cannot be credited to the demonic resistance. Hear me. There are certain stagnation in the life of a person that cannot be credited to the demonic opposition. It is rather the best position discerned by heaven to keep you faithful. This is profound. I said, there are certain stagnation is not demons, opposition, resistance from the dark realm. No, 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 brother. No, sir. No, 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 no. It is the best position heaven has discerned to keep us faithful. Because God knows if you do not cross the line and he give you or make you access to certain things, uh -uh, only God knows what you will become. So he keep you there until you learn yieldedness. It keeps you there until you learn to trust God at another level. It keeps you there before it promotes you to the next thing. There are people God can trust them with $1,000 because it's going to be a danger for them in their walk with God. So please, Hear me. Spiritual intelligence demands that a man understand death, embrace it, position themselves in the posture of humility, undressing from pride and self-centeredness. When a man dies, he becomes immune to things that can kill him. When you die to adultery, adultery cannot kill you. When you die to sin, sin cannot kill you. When you die to money, prosperity and abundance cannot kill you. When you die to an office or an elevation, it cannot kill you. But when you're alive to something, you will remain a fugitive and a prey and a victim. Please hear me. Where God want to take us and take you, Demands that we cross the line of death and yield completely to him.
One man one day spoke to me and he said, Apostle, I don't get it. I'm getting so frustrated. Because, you know, when I speak, you know, no one is listening. When I talk, no one listens. I said to him, it is true you have much to say. And you are saying a lot. I want you to hear this, brothers and sisters. But is it possible that you have not acquired yet what to say that makes people listen? Is it possible that it's not because they don't want to listen? It's because you are not acquired yet what to be saying that command listening. You can have much to say, but until your word become a voice, you will not be heard. Learn to acquire a voice by humility, by obedience, and by surrender. God doesn't ask us to do this for the sake of doing it. It's because he wants to elevate us. That's why I say let this word comfort you. Let this word uplift you. Hear me, brothers and sisters. He searched the motives of the heart. And I'm going to close with this one. Anna, why do you want to have a baby? Is it because of the mockery of Penina? Is it because you want to make a point? Why do you want to have a baby, Anna? God brought Anna through the line of death from wanting to have a baby to make a point. He upgraded her to have now a baby, not because she wanted to be an answer to Penina, but for divine purpose. And then God gave her not just a baby, but a prophet. She had to cross the line of clearing out her motives. Why do we want to prosper? Why do we want to become the face of God for our generation? Why do we want to succeed? To show the people in your village that they mock you and now look at me. Or to make a point to the people who despise you all your life? What are the motives, Anna? Magalongo yangala ya mangaya. This level of surrender by the Spirit of God that I'm prescribing to us, listen to me, by the will of God, will lift you up. I said, it will lift you up. I will say it again. It will lift you up. If you prescribe to it, it will lift you up. David, what are you doing buried in the cave? You are king. Tell me. What are you doing buried in the cave, David? King David, what are you doing? You've been anointed already. What are you doing running in the cave of Avalon buried there? Because there's a process to die, to cross the line. Hear me, God is saying, the reason I'm bringing you this word to comfort you, 
my staff and my rod to comfort you. It's because I want you to cross the line of surrendering. Why? Because David, you are not just buried in the cave just because you will be king of Israel and Judah. No, 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 no. This prescription of death, this prescription of surrender, it is not only for you, David, to be the king, but so that the Messiah can bear your name. That one day when the blind man called Bartimaeus is sitting by the side of the road, can shout from the dirt and say, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus was called Son of David. That's why your surrender cannot just be normal like all other king. It has to be a crossing of a higher level of surrender and life and death because your name will be carried for generation, even by the Messiah. God, why do you want me to die like that? I thought I was already dead. I thought I was already yielded. No, there is another level, brothers and sisters, because of what your name will be for the generation to come. Because of what he will entrust it to you. He cannot take a chance to keep you alive. You have to die to bear and to carry God. Crossing the line will sharpen your heart. It will circumcise your heart to befit honor. Joseph has to go through the land of death, through pit, prisons, so that he can rise up, Marago Yandoya, to befit honor. Ecclesiastic 10.10 10 says, if the ask is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. Did you hear that? We are so alive, running away from being sharpened. I am sharpening you right now. My heart has been sharpened. And then we just keep doing, bah, cutting a tree, cutting a tree, cutting a tree. Ten days we are still cutting the tree. But wisdom brings success. Take time and sharpen the heart. Circumcise the heart. Yield the heart. Die to our own self-ambitions. So when we stand up to cut the heart of our calling, it falls so quickly. It was said... If you have eight days to cut down a tree, use seven days to sharpen the axe. I'm closing. There is a track record of success. Only signed by death. There is a track record Signed by surrender. Oh, there is a track record of success. Signed by a yielded heart. Those who have chosen the ancient path. The way to live is the way to die first. Church. Let return to the ancient path. Let embrace surrender and die to all the things that we are convinced will give us value. When a man died to finance, he doesn't debate tithing and giving. No, 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 no. He's finished with that long time ago. But if he remain alive, he will need a sermon every day to convince him and reconvince him and reconvince him and reconvince him because there is no circumcision of the heart. There is no light.
Hallelujah. God has to push Abraham from love to trust to the fear of the Lord through the sacrifice of his son. That's the line of death. And God called that worship. A surrendered life produces worship. God has to push Moses from his passion, the passion of his calling, strangling literally a man, an Egyptian with his bare hand. I mean, the guy was zealous to fulfill the call of God on his life, but yet God had to push him out of that in the wilderness, a place of death. He died. He lost his strength and recovered God's strength through death. The Bible says in the book of Acts that he was educated in the science of Egypt. He was eloquent. He was a man of the world. But yet, through the wilderness, as he crossed the land of death, his eloquence, he died. He said, I can't talk anymore. Only then God began to speak for him. When he lost his strength, he recovered God's strength. When he lost his word, he recovered God's word. I want you tonight, this morning, you know, and I know, where I'm still alive. And where God is demanding this church, is demanding each one of you, each one, each one, each one, no exception. Each one of us, there is something that he wants us to kill and bring to his altar. Each one. Including the area that makes you lose sleep is because you are still alive to it. Including those fears that bring anxiety to you and anger, you are still alive to it. When you die to something, it can no longer kill you or activate you. Not because you don't care, but because you choose to live in Christ completely and totally. I want you to take today time and you are sitting down by your head Let's just play something in the background right now. And even those who are playing, just don't play. Also, bow your head as you are playing. I don't want anyone to miss this. And those who are watching online, bow your head as you are praying. We all know the area where we are still alive that is not Christ who is living. I don't want a quotation of a word that says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ will live in me. No, 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 no. I want it to become an experience. I want we actualize it. I don't want it to be a quotation. I don't want it to be a confession. I do not want it to just be doctrinally truth. What are the areas where you know it's still running you. Ashakala Buba. Koria Mato Sele Makata Yambaya. Le Garondo Ko Il Pralato Si Palake Temosa. Palando Ngobange Le El Palosi Alahanti Al Kriandoa. Vagos Al Bangandi El Prianto Woti Al Pati Anta. Le galonge andala pa quarentel fesile mar elevo gaba kaya alani indele gento ur impar endo stipaye le uraba otai andeli anto gomba sai alpa ende wo esilende a rai antoya ba ande a lenge a ande kosi belebo handeka kaya ende lego baga zele uan farindol bri alfi 
li rundi mi artor fari a cola mai ande vir in to siento lo gial va eren e carut li rundi mi rol fari no si alino ki alto bagia kayo le bonga de de kin de lerin de kelen de orientopia si kuma ka ri antos el perando halea li ande leri en diviron su us menon tetea li girindur ste pi antoleri mi chinde ni li rikuberi atoni mende ki aoti ala as elebo as ya tayantos as ya tayantos ya as ya talantos ya na ala di anluria lenderiat kori el frendori antel fralengori inte siara antusiki He giando rianta luri bi fukal khatun sikali antoriatas I would like you just to rise up now on your feet I want you to walk at the altar and just put your hand either on the carpet or here or on this area make room I want you to come and say Lord I bury this I bury this I bury me with this I bury this I want you to do that just stand up You don't need to write anything. Just come and do it. It's speaking from your mouth and said, "I bury this. I bury this that I may rise to new life. I bury this so I may rise to new life. I bury this so I may rise to new life. Come on, keep coming. I bury this so I may rise to new life. You come and do that and return back to your place and make room for other people. Just keep playing for me now." the drum keep playing the musician begin to build an atmosphere i bury this and i rise to new life i bury this and i rise to new life i bury this and this and that and this and i rise to new life father i bury it and i rise to new life everything that's controlling my life everything that i'm addicted to everything that make me lose sleep everything that make my heart be sad i bury this and i rise to new life Oh God I bury it and I rise to new life I bury this and I rise to new life I bury this and I rise to new life just keep playing please build up an atmosphere for me I bury this and I rise to new life te kebonga la te karama sia la madea o kosia malanto rapete ke la pate yanga yanto si le garosa Pakayandorosa lagaria madabolosa kayamati karaya marababosa lagade gorosia la madanga rababosa ehire mondi kalamati karaya badabosa this is not a funeral to be sad this is a funeral to rejoice this is the funeral of what has been controlling your life all this time this is the funeral of what has been violating your heart for all this time This is the funeral of circumcision for a new status makalendo this is an upgrade in the spirit maria kata don't cry it for too much rejoice that you let it go rejoice that you bury it rejoice that you don't want it anymore rejoice it that you give it to god rejoice because you yield your heart to god to do his will you yield your heart to surrender you yield your heart to abandon yourself to him you yield your heart so you know god i trust you you can trust me again you can trust me again you can trust me again this is a time a renewal of a covenant marago logo daya rende a change of name abram you shall be called abraham only then you can give birth to isaac marago ti ala mandea o si amantola mati li carota ya ana this is a covenant making and you bury and go back your status has changed now you can give birth to the man that his word will not fall on the ground without bringing back a result Samuel the great prophet the judge of Israel Oria Makola Masi Marate Kelemosia Katalama Daya Ere Kota Kataya Pakataya Ah Sataya Mandelia Brandaka I will call Pastor Kofi just come and take the microphone with the worship team let everybody rise up on your your feet begin to pray in the spirit right now begin to pray in the spirit don't weep Don't cry rejoice in the spirit rejoice in the spirit speak with a new tongue speak your best prayer unto God by the spirit of a broken man by the spirit of a broken woman by the spirit of one who are rising up 
from the dead into place of glory, into place of elevation, that we may enter the realm of divine intelligence to acquire the secrets that he have only for those who can carry him, who can bear him, who can be trusted with glory, who can be trusted with business, who can be trusted with a greater ministry, who can be trusted with elevation. Ah, Everybody begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. Begin to thank God in the spirit. Let the Holy Ghost thank God for you. Just keep praying. 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 Somebody's being elevated. Somebody's reaching revelation. Somebody's having a download. Somebody's being eliminated. Somebody's being transformed. Somebody's heart is being healed. Somebody's heart is being rejoicing. Somebody's heart is being liberated. Heaviness is being broken. Chains are being broken. Sadness is being broken. Oppression is being broken. Depression is being broken. Malagerodaya, recover your smile, recover your strength, recover your joy, recover your righteousness, recover your peace, recover in the name of Jesus. Let a new life flush through you with a greater understanding, with a greater life, with a greater wisdom in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for divine intelligent upgrade, for divine intelligent arising capacity in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' mighty name, just keep praying. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, shakala, mama. Shande rebo shakala, mama. Oh, rabba ba 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 shakala.